My name is Sarah O'Connor. I'm a production manager at the Royal Opera House. Uh, we're here in the paint workshop in Perfleet, but most of the time I would say I'm based in Covent Garden in the theatre itself. So this is the paint frame, um, and this is where the scenic artists do all of their beautiful work to make things look like other things, so that you don't see that this is actually plywood and uh, fabric and, and paint, but the, eventually it will look like a beautiful old painted frame that's gone through lots of aging process. So the final product will look a bit more like this. And you've got this imagination that it's a really old frame for some giant paintings. As you can see, I'm not very tiny. These are actually giant paintings that are going to be on the set. So these paint frames are from uh, Rigoletto, which is going to be one of the shows opening the new season next September. And in the model box, they look large, but not that large. But you've got to remember that the model box is to scale. So by the time we actually work that up, they end up like this, a very large painting that wouldn't fit on the wall of your house. Uh, but you've got to remember that in Rigoletto, we're in the Duke's Palace, and um, it is a slightly larger than life space because our stage is so big in Covent Garden. So the production manager role, from the technical point of view, is usually the first person to come on board on a production. You get a look at an early design and you're playing with the possibilities. Will that fit in the venue? Is it going to be too tall? What are the sight lines going to be like? You're looking at the broad brush strokes of it initially. Does it look vaguely like it might be on budget? Does it look vaguely like it'll fit into the schedule? And then as you work up the design, you get, and as the designer becomes more confident in their choices, because initially they might be letting you into very much a work in progress, and you have to be very sensitive to that. You then pick up their design as it cements itself and you take it forward with all of the technical and production teams. So I work across lighting, stage, carpentry, metalwork, painters, draftspeople, all of these people I'm working with to make sure that the designer's vision gets to stage. Across all of those processes, we don't lose the artistic impetus that, that is coming behind it. So I had my first view of Rigoletto as a, as a design idea about two years ago. And at that point, pretty much straight away, I work alongside Flo, who as the draft person will start to take those rough shapes and put them onto our plans, check that they fit in the rehearsal room, check that they fit under the galleries to drive on and off stage, check the sight lines from the key seats, all of those kind of initial steps. And I'm working alongside her to check all of those and to make sure that any kind of mechanics or things the set needs to do are physically possible, to kind of get a voice in early if there's any health and safety concerns, all of those kind of headline issues while the design is still in development. I had a thought about the Act One truck. So when mm. the truck comes into its downstage position, do we have a way to get in the back? Uh, with the side walls? Yeah, because it's parked kind of there, isn't it? Yeah, so it comes down. So I guess we've got this space here. Yeah, I wonder how wide that is. Yeah. So we've got 800. Yeah, and then we've got clearance of 100. 100, OK. So there'll be 900 there for we officially get a white card model at 18 months out from the show going on stage and then the final design model is a year out and really for that first nine months or even a year that you're working on it it's me and Flo or whoever is the drafts person from the model room working really closely together and we speak to the painting staff we speak to the construction staff so that we're steering the design and getting the design to a point where it physically works and we can physically deliver it and at the same time they're costing it for us so that we can make sure that financially we're being responsible and, and we can actually afford this design and you're always is making tweaks for what's best for the show all the way along. Then somewhere between six and nine months out from it going on stage, um, depending on when your slot in the workshop is, because this workshop is constantly 
bringing out new operas. That's the point where we hand over it as a more finalised, right, this is what we're building, and we hand over to Nathan, who is the construction drafts person, and he would work up all of the construction drawings. So he takes our drawings that say the frame for the painting is 11 and a half metres wide, and he's the person who goes, these bits should be metal, these bits should be wood, this is where it needs to break for storage or for assembly, and that's where that process comes in and obviously we're still involved myself and Flo because changes can happen or he can go well if it was 11.4 meters instead of 11.5 meters wide that would be better for these reasons and that's when we go back to a designer and we have those conversations um, to, to get the best version on stage. My name is Flo and I'm a drafts person for the Royal Opera House in the model room. I'm normally based in Covent Garden and we're here today in Perfleet at their construction workshops. This is the model for Rigoletto, which will be opening our next season. A model box is a great tool for a theatre designer to present their ideas to the company, to the singers, to the technical team, to everybody involved, because with when working in, as a theatre designer, you're really working with designing space. So to have a 3D model so that you can look at how it's all going to move around, how the set's going to work, the space you've got for the performances is really useful. Um, it's all in 1 to 25, which is the standard scale for UK theatre. Um, so all of these items are exactly 25 times smaller than the real pieces will be. We start with the designer's model, which we then 3D model in AutoCAD. So we look at the sizing of it, we start to give real depth to the walls and some of the practicalities that we know something of this size and scale will have to have. We then create drawing sheets from it, which have got all the different useful views that will be sent to our construction department. This will start to have dimensions on it, notes on it, a bit more information about where structure can be, what the piece of scenery is gonna to need to be used for, how it needs to break apart. This then goes into our ground plan. So we have the whole building and the section, and we start to look at where that item will fit within it, where it needs to move, where it might start off, and what it looks like in the section in terms of all of our flown bars. We also then look at it in our sightline view, so we can have a look at different seats, how much of it's gonna be seen, how much of it's gonna be visible, whether there are any key spots that are quite difficult that people won't be able to see certain elements from and we can go all over the auditorium with this and have a look at you know right at the very back in the auditorium in the amphitheatre how it starts to look and even further back to the very back seat and start to get a real sense of how this piece um, of scenery will fit into the whole auditorium and getting all the information that we need back to the creative team for their input and across to our construction workshops. Hello, my name's Nathan. I'm a construction drafts person at the Royal Opera House and my job is to look after the drafting office and to work out how we're going to build and then create bench drawings of the scenery. So for our process, we will get a brief drawing which will come from the model room. Um, and so this one on this screen is one that Flo has done. And this drawing will have all of the sizes on it and it will have all the, like, the practical effects that I need to be aware of. So where are the sight lines for where people can see for access? What happens to the doors, which way they work, whether they go upstage or downstage? Uh, and if there's any kind of like special breaks for storage or anything like that to do with co-producers. I'll then take this, this drawing and then I'll work out where are we going to break certain components to get them on the pallets, to get them up to the opera house or for storage. How we're going to build the object, how we're going to kind of lift it up on stage, a way to kind of compartmentalise it. Um, and I can break it into components. And from there, I'll then design each component to fit together, and I'll draw it out of timber, steel, aluminium, plastics, and I'll bring all these parts together so that we can build those. So I've got to think about how is it going to be pushed around, how is it going to be transported, and how is it going to be built? That kind of falls to me. And also, how do people access everything? Because we have to break everything apart into separate parts to get it to get on the lorries. So what we're looking here is the Act 3 wall for Rigoletto that we saw on the screen. Now the construction drawings have all come down to the bench and they've started to make all the components in metal and now what you're looking at is the prefit. So we've got the upstage wall and the downstage wall that are being fitted to the base trucks. You've then got this cross beam that comes across that will keep the walls the right distance and will also support the platform and the platform is then dropped in. You can see that how the guys have built it They've stropped on the inside of the walls and that's exactly how they'll build it at the Opera House.
So it turns out that the thing on this show, because every show has a thing, is doors and door furniture. And I could give you an hour long lecture on the intricacies of the door furniture on the doors in this set. It sounds boring on the surface, but actually it's been really interesting to think about how can we have doors that are on bomber hinges, so hinges that swing both directions. But we don't want them to swing in both directions because we don't want them to flap. We want them to swing in one direction in one act and the other direction in another act. And how do we stop that in between? And you know, Nathan has ended up inventing a little catch that we can put in, that we can switch in the interval between one act and the other. So we've done a little prototype here to see if we can get the bomber hinges to work um, yeah. for a 75 mm door. Okay. So it works fine. So it works And what we've just well. had to chamfer in there to, to yeah, create we, the turning circle. Yeah, we have to cut the hinge in so that it can pivot around. Fine. And then we're going to put in a discrete packer in there to bring this up. It may have a I bevel see. on, so that yeah. as it comes over, it can roll. So it will sort of hide the hinge a bit. Yeah. Um, so you still get that nice chunky thickness, but also Fine. a door you can use. So it's those tiny details. Sometimes it's the big stuff. On this show, it's been those little details. And it's really satisfying to be able to pay attention to the little details and know that you're going on stage with a system that you've fully thought through. I think the thing to remember when it comes to backstage theatre is just how many roles there are. For everyone that you see on the stage, there'll be many, many more faces that have fed into that process from a backstage point of view. And each of those jobs is a career path in itself. So production management is one career path, scenic art is a different career path, drafting is a different career path, lighting. And even within lighting, then you've got, are you a lighting control operator? Are you a production electrician? There are so many roles that people don't realize get to create that finished product. And there are so many places where you see the result of those roles. So if you go to a theme park, that's probably theatre scenic artists that painted that theme park. If you go on a cruise ship, there will be people working in the technical theatre to put on those performances on a cruise ship. If you see, watch the Olympic opening ceremonies, they are again the same skills. A lot of people work across both the film industry and the theatre industry. There's a lot of opportunities out there and it's not, it's not running away with the circus. Um, these, are, these are proper careers with, with detailed paths and opportunities. My advice for anyone coming into the industry is to try everything, experience everything. When I was studying, I never even knew that a drafts person was a job, let alone that it was something that I would enjoy so much. I've come about finding this part of my career through meeting everybody that I could meet, trying all the different roles, trying to be, you know, trying as a designer, as an assistant, I've worked in costume, I've tried a lot of everything, at which point you can really pinpoint the areas of the industry that you enjoy and where your skills are best suited. Scenery is such a, a massive thing and it's so everything we make looks like something else so it, it draws on a lot of skills you know you don't actually have to to learn exactly this part you can learn a certain aspect of it so like you've got your bench carpentry courses um, we've had people that have done scaffolding before uh, we've had mechanics before as long as you if you like making stuff you can find your way into this I think there are two different types of people in, in theatre. There's some people come into this because they're really interested in the mechanics and the practical elements of how things work. And there are another group of people who are really into it because ultimately they love performance, they love theatre, they love opera. I am probably in that latter camp. And for me, one of the most amazing things is when you've been working on this project for so many months or even years, and you get to that point of seeing it on a stage and you see audience reactions and you see audiences going, wow, how did they do that?